This car was sent to us after a thousand pound replacement ECU was fitted and it's still no start. Let's walk through what really went wrong with it and what was missed. If you're a technician, a garage owner, or even a DIYer, this is gonna be a perfect example of why you need to check your powers, your ground, your communication, load test everything before you start fitting parts. Let's get into this one and show you what we found. So I know you all like a backstory. So this car is actually coming to us because it's a car sales place. They've sold the car, it's broken down. They've got their own workshop. They got it back in there and they found no communication with the engine ECU. So suspecting it was the ECU, they've had it removed, sent away to a professional repair company. They've confirmed the fault and said the ECU is not repairable. So the next option was secondhand used unit or a brand new pre-programmed, so the dealer said, that it's gonna be plug and play, it's gonna program itself to the car, all they've gotta do is turn the ignition on, it's gonna start. So they've gone down that route, 1,000 pound. Put it in the car, still no good. So they've told us about that part of the story. When it's come in the workshop, we've seen inside the car, it's got an aerial for the transponder key, it's also got a new body control module or underbonnet fuse box, um, they're programmed as well. That's been changed. Um, it's got the new ECU bolted on there. Apparently that's got no communication either. But what now people are saying is, oh, it needs programming before it will turn on. How many programs, I mean, if it's not turning on? I think people are clutching its jaws. So that's a backstory. Underbonnet fuse box has been changed. New ECU's been put in there, apparently pre-programmed. So we'll have to have a look into that to see whether that's going to be true or not. And Still no communication with the ECU, apparently. So we're going to go through it. We're going to check communication first, see if that's true, see if it does just need setting up. And then we'll need to check why the underbonnet fuse box has been changed. You know, have they, have they noticed something, they're losing voltages or something? Or is the new ECU faulty? We've had that on a number of occasions. Electronic parts are made, sometimes not tested. So is that faulty? Have they missed something? Have we got two faults? Is it the ECU and something else? We don't know. So let's find out what's going on. Right, so we've got it plugged in with a 399. Um, we can talk to the SIM unit, as you can see on here. Um, what else can we talk to? We can talk to most things. Um, airbag, read fault codes. So there we go. So. We can talk to a number of things, but we cannot talk to the engine ECU. Talk to the bonnet fuse box, we can talk to the instrument panel, airbag, everything like that. What's the first step? It's got to be check out the powers and grounds of the ECU. Um, if the ECUs are tucked away, I normally go to the relays and fuses first. But if you can get directly to the ECU to see what's going on there first, sometimes makes it easier. This one is on top of the engine. Let's just show you where it is. So because this one's easily accessible, this is worth checking directly to it. We could go to the middle, which would be fuse box, relay, all that side of it, see if it's all turning on. If it was one that was tucked away under the scuttle or inside the wing or anything like that, we'd go for the middle first before we stripped it. But this one, fairly easy to get to. So let's get to the diagram, see what we're meant to be getting to the ECU, see what was missed. Most ECUs have a permanent live then a switch live, whether that's a switch power or a can control to tell the ECU that you've turned the ignition on. And then that powers up its main control relay to put powers to injectors, etc., etc. That's the normal way they work. Um, so we're going to have a look through this one. We're actually having some sheets made up, which we will be selling as posters, but we'll also be sending them out as PDFs. So if that's something you'd be interested, in, I'll tell you at the end of the video how you can let us know and we'll get some over to you. So. Let's have a look at this. What we have got is, so the main thing we've got, this is terminal 30, comes down, straight across, through fuse 22, down, pin 32 on plug B on the engine ECU. That's the first one we're gonna test. Then the next one, we've got ignition circuit, ignition main relay. 
once this has been turned on through, what is this? The multifunction control module turns this on. It's got, where does that power come from? Oh no, it's got an earth. So it's got an earth path coming up to this. Then the multifunction control module powers that up, turns the relay, so this is the coil side, it'll flick the relay on from, again, the main live through, out of this one, through a fuse 30 and straight down, once to the coil and once to the engine ECU of plug B. So engine ECU, plug B, pin 64. So if it's got this one, if it's got the main live, then hopefully we've got the switch live and then we can go a bit further. So we're looking for 32 and 64 on plug B. Let's go and check them out, see what we've got. So we can check without the ECU connected, the main live and the switch live, because the ECU doesn't control any of them. So we just need to check that first. If you're checking them too, it's okay. If you're checking any of the controls, like the engine control relay, it has to be plugged in. Once we're confirmed we've got our live and our switch live, then it should turn the relay on. But you can't check the relay through really until it's connected up. So that's where you need to back probe it while it's connected. Um, also, we're not gonna be doing any um, load testing or anything like that at the moment. We're just doing our basic checks. Main live, switch live, control out. Once we think that they're okay, that's when we would load test earths and you know check our earths and things like that. But we don't need to do it straight away. Let's just see if we're missing anything quite basic and then we'll run down that route. So luckily it's 16, 32, blah, 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 down here. So that is pin 32 for the main life. That is dead. Be sure, check your meter's working, or whatever you're using. That's saying it can't just be as simple as that. Right, ignition feed, 64. We've got feed. We have lost feed to main live. It did say it was a red. We're definitely on the right pin. Okay. Is this why they changed the underbonnet fuse box? I don't know. So let's go back to the fuse box, check if we've got live there. Another thing, is the fuse box correct? Have they changed it from one similar? Doesn't give out the same powers. What happens if they change that first and then put a new ECU in it, and this is incorrect. I've had these where if they're programmed wrong to the car, it will actually know what relays to turn on and off because it has got a programmable control module in there. I'm sure the main permanent live won't be like that, but let's have a check of the fuse. Go and double check what fuse we're on. See if we've got the power here and where we think the fault is. If you remember looking on the diagram, it was actually fuse 22, which powered the main permanent live on there. So that's what we're gonna to go to now. It is that end one. There's my probe. Voltage on one side of the fuse. And we've got voltage on the other. It is not getting from that fuse to that ECU. Right, I think what we're gonna do first is put the original fuse board in there, confirm we've still got power to it, and see if it's giving out then. If it's not, we need to trace this wiring through, see if we can find out what's going on. I can't see anything major going on. Uh, looks fairly easily rooted. So I'm gonna change that over first, and I'll show you if it changes anything. And if not, what we're going to do next? Still the same. So, what's going on? Is this the original fault? Is the ECU actually at fault? Was the original first ECU even faulty? Who got it wrong? If they've got it wrong, have we got two faults? Comment down below whether you think this is two faults or whether you think it's been misdiagnosed. Right, we've got to check what's going on here. Um, I could bypass it to see if there's anything else going on, but I'm not quite at that point yet. I want to find this fault, and then, because what could be happening is it's cut through a communication line as well as a, a, a permanent live. We could have a chafing going on, a short circuit or whatever, and that's why when people ask us, when we're at this point, 
we say we're going to need to strip the wire and loom, find out what's going on. They go, oh, just run a bypass, will you? But what if that's chased across the top of the gearbox? We do a bypass and then something else goes wrong, ends up catching the car on fire. So that is why you don't do bypasses until you know exactly where the fault is. Once you've found the fault, that's your decision. You're the professional. You should be able to say, if I bypass from, bypass from there to there, there's going to be no more issues with it. We can rule out that part of the wiring loom and I know it's going to be safe. So, right, let's have a strip down. Have a look. Great success. It's very nice. Right, we've found a broken wire. Let's show you what we got. So, main engine loom here, just where this securing cable tie was. You can see it's crimped just about there. It's rubbed through, just starting to nick some of the other wires. It must have caught this one. And yeah, corroded away. So, quick little repair. Just going to do a standard solder repair. The wire's got a little bit of length in it, so it will just go direct. I can guarantee that hasn't corroded any further down the wiring. I don't know why. It used to be that you used to get some corrosion in the wire. It would go, you know, a few foot black. You couldn't get anything into it. But now this one will be bang on either side. So uh, it's a bit strange how that happens, but I don't know. Um, so I'm going to repair that. And then we're going to find out two things. Is the original ECU faulty? is the new ECU pre-programmed from the factory. <laughs> I think I know where my money's gonna lie. So uh, let's have a look. Let's get that repaired. I'll show you again. If you want to, drop it in the comments down below whether you think that that unit is pre-programmed. I've never had one. I think they're set up, but I don't think they're linked to the immobilizer. I think you still have to do the last bit of programming. It might be set for what car it is, what options it's got, wheel sizes, all that side of it. But I don't think the immobilizer is going to be programmed. But I don't know. Let's get that checked. We'll see when it's done. All repaired. Let's see if we got power back at the ECU. And we have. All right, moment of truth. If I plug that ECU back in, what are we thinking? I don't know. All right, let's get it done live on camera. She's plugged in, come with me. So the immobilizer light was flashing. Um, that was mainly because the body control module was off, but is it gonna power up? Yes, fuel pumps come on, it's powered up. So they were saying it was self-programming. It is turned on. The immobilizer light was flashing, now it's gone solid. Maybe you have to leave it for a minute or something. I don't know. Well, while we're doing that, let's have a look, see if it's communicating. We're gonna leave that on for a minute or so. Make sure that we can talk to the engine ECU now, and then we'll see if that's changed. See if it tells us whether it's programmed or not. I mean, it has stopped. Stop flashing. Hold on. Give it a scan. Okay, so we can talk to it. So uh, that's proved something. Read fault codes. Read fault codes. Okay, what are we going to find? Do we think it's going to be a mobilizer? I would think so. They might have a way that they can program these when, and then it sort of links itself together. Still a solid light, that should go out. The little spanner light should go out when the immobilizer's sort of completed its, its doodah. It's taken a long time to communicate. Hmm. So it's talked to the engine computer. It's gone to the point of fault codes, but won't go past this. Oh no, S. Well, there we go. We have got. CAN bus maximum configuring list not programmed. Maximum configuration list not programmed. Controller program error. Control unit programming error. And an EPOM error. Doesn't look good, does it? Well, what's the chance of the old ECU working? What do we think? Let's do it. Let's plug the old one back in. So let's see 
whether the ECU company done their job right. So, what do we think? Do we think we've got two faults? I don't know. They've only got one bolt with earth. It's bolted onto the plastic manifold and it's got an earth lead bolted to it. So we're going to connect that up and just connect the other two leads. The only time I could think that having two faults on a similar sort of fault with this is, oh, let's get you down a bit, is if that wire was touching backwards and forwards and turning this relay on and off quickly, it sort of, sh sort of spikes it. Yeah, maybe, but I don't think so. I think that's got to a point where all of a sudden it's just broken. It's gone down. And failed. Turn the ECU off, and that was your no comms from day one. So, that in. Just going to have it connected with the earth, the two plugs, and jobs the carrot. See what we got. All right, see if it turns on. If it powers up, it has. It's powered up. I've heard the fuel pump running. Spanner light's gone out. <laughs> well, no engine light on. No, nothing. Sounds a bit better, doesn't it? So, did you suspect the same? Did we sort of know what was going to go on? I don't know. But I'm going to come back to you after I finish this up with my final thoughts and sort of do a recap of what's gone on. And also, I'll give you the sort of information for us to send you the posters, or you can buy the bigger ones, the laminated A1 size sheets. So, I'll see you once I've got this back together. So, where did they go wrong? Um, were they wrong to send it away to have it tested? I don't know. You know, if you're, I've seen it ever since I've been in the trade. People suspect ECU, send it away. They either say there's nothing wrong with it, and then they go right the way through the process again, swap the ECU and find out it was, or vice versa, where it's come to this one, said, yeah, you're right. ECU's kaput. You need to get yourself a new one. Ground down the road, it's in the same place. So it goes to show, powers, grounds, low testing, all that side of it. This was quite a basic one. You know, this should have been picked up, I think. But if you're not sure, you rely on other professionals. They've told you something, it wasn't right. So who knows what was right? So it just goes to show how easily these things can be missed. But it's another one done, it's on the road. Hopefully you've all learned a bit. So hopefully you like this one. If you did, like, subscribe. Have you been caught out like this? Tell me your story in the comments down below if you've had a very similar situation where you've been caught out either by your own mistakes, which is hard to write down in the comments, but I bet you'd have had some, or where somebody else has told you something and it's not been correct. So thanks very much for watching. Also, like, subscribe, do all that side of it. There's a link down below for my Instagram page. Go on there, send me a message with your email address. If you can let me know what you thought of this video, that'd be great. But just send me your email address. We'll add you to our list and we'll send you out a PDF copy of our sort of checklist of this. And we'll add you to the email list. As we produce other ones, we can send you them as well. So go check out the Instagram page, send me a direct message and I'll reply back to you. And there we go. Job's a carrot. We'll see you on the next one.